In this video, we'll be building a cost and usage dashboard. But first, I want to take you to the billing and cost management page. So let's go there. I only use this account for demo, so there's not a lot of services on here. But uh, on the left hand side, you'll notice there's some options on here for cost categories. Cost Explorer is a good one. Um, and then if you want to go down here and create a savings plan, that stuff's down here as well. Another option is to create your own cost and usage dashboard so you can really drill down to find out what your spend is going towards. So let's go ahead and start building that. Okay, to get started building our dashboard, first we need to export the data. So from the building and cost management page, you go to data export here. And then we're going to create a data export. And we're going to, it's going to be a cost and usage dashboard powered by QuickSight. And our export name, let's just call it um, <clears throat> cost and usage export. I'm going to leave the QuickSight namespace as default, it's fine. Now, um, if you don't have QuickSight set up already, there'd be a button to create a QuickSight user here. I've already created a user, so I'm going to go back into QuickSight because I don't remember what the username is. So let's open QuickSight here. Let's open another tab. If you already have an account created, it should auto-log you in. Mine did that, so... The quickest way to find out what your username is, just come up here to the profile here. And it's unless you gave it a unique name, it's going to be a, a number. Um, so I'm going to copy this here. And now I'm going to go back and put that in here. <clears throat> here. And then quick site region, uh, Virginia, that's fine. And then for the S3 bucket, I'm going to go ahead and create one. So let's hit the configure button here. Yes, yeah, so we're creating a bucket and we're going to call it, let's just call it tech help. And same region, Virginia. Uh, this has to have this bucket policy or for in order for it to work. Let's see. And I'm, this has happened before, and I don't know why this keeps happening, but the region changes when you come down here. Um, so make sure that uh, you verify that the region is correct before you hit create. So let's go back to Virginia here, and we're going to hit create bucket. Oops, that's right. It doesn't like a purchase letter, does it? Try it again. All right, so we have our bucket created. It does require this S3 path prefix, so I'm just going to call it um, cost and usage dash. And we're going to have it create a new role. And then we're going to hit create here. It's going to take a few seconds. All right, that was pretty fast, actually. So now it's, it's created the export. Now it has to wait 24 hours for the data to come in. So until then, it'll be in this in-progress status here. So I'm going to log out of this account, log into another account where I've already generated another export that's already ready to go. All right, so I logged out of my demo account and I'm logged into another AWS account that has a lot more services, so we'll have more information on the dashboard. So uh, you'll see that the uh, status is healthy on this one. It's ready to go. So all we have to do is uh, click on the export name here. And then just open dashboard. So 
So now we're actually logged into QuickSight, and this is this is the default page, the billing summary. You can go back to the introduction here to read all about how it was set up and everything. There's a table of contents in here. Um, let's go back to the executive billing summary. Um, and let's scroll down here. So we can see there's a pretty big jump in March. So let's click on that. What, what happened here? <clears throat> Let's go further down here and give us some more detail. So here's, so when I clicked on March right here, it actually changed all these other graphs to be March. So um, now if I look at March, oh, it was a renewal for a drop, uh, Dropbox business account through the marketplace. So you can find out some pretty good information here fairly quickly. Scroll down some more. Top accounts, but I only have one account, so it's the same one. Um, savings and discounts here. Now if I scroll back up and I go over to, there's a, another here, another dashboard here for trends. You'll notice also there's a recommendation section for each one of these tabs. Um, this one is to set up an anomaly detection, so if some crazy cost comes through that you'll get notified. And then let's go through, you've got the compute, here's some recommendations here as well. Storage is one I look at a lot. And there's a ton of recommendations on here for that one. And then you have all these other tabs as well. Let's go all the way over here. Yeah, so you got workspaces. We don't use that, but um, that just is an example of what you can track here. Also, you can also set up alerts on here, which is pretty cool. So if I click on this box right here and click on the alert, So the value to track, it's it hard codes this value to track that's already in here. But what I can do is if it gets above, let's say, a thousand dollars, I can set this thing up to notify me daily, weekly. I'm not going to turn this on because I don't want to get these emails, but the email is already defaulted. This is the um, account that it was set up under. You can't change this. And then also you're going to be notified if there's no data. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to cancel that right there. There's a ton of other information down here below. It goes over the different storage services. And then EFS, I don't have that, so there's there's no data down here. Another, another cool thing you can do from here is you can share this data. So if I click on the share button right here, and you can share just a particular view, like just this page, or you can share the whole dashboard, all these tabs. So let's say I wanted to, I wanted to share the whole thing. From here, <clears throat> you can add invite people. So if I type in, let's see, you know, it's, it's not going to find my email account because I don't have. An account on dashboard with this AWS account. Um, what you can do though is you can come over here. Actually, let's go over here and um, I'll just show you how easy it is to create another account. So let's get out of here. And then if we go up here and we go to manage QuickSight, pretty easy to do. You just invite a user. Once that's done and they they're set up, then you can come back here and put their name in here, and it'll send them the entire dashboard. Well, you can you can go through the billing and management portal and, and pretty quickly find stuff there, but if you really want to drill down, this is the place to do it. And the dashboard's pre-built for you. You don't have to do anything on the back end. I will include a link to some other dashboards um, that you can custom build yourself in the description below. That is how you quickly build a cost and usage, usage dashboard in AWS. If you like the video, please click the like and subscribe button. I appreciate it. If you have suggestions for other videos related to AWS, that would be great if you could add those to the comments section down below. Hope this video was helpful. Uh, again, if you could hit the like and subscribe, I really would appreciate it. Thank you.